So, here's the real question. How do dentists like you, who aren't willing to let insurance dictate how you will run your practice, who want to create incredibly profitable practices without sacrificing your time or sanity, how do you create the strategies to ensure your practice not only survives, but thrives in the 21st century? That's the blaring question, and Dr. Steve Shalins is here to provide the answers. Welcome to Dental Practice Freedom Radio. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? This is Dr. Steve Schlintz. I don't want to welcome you back to another episode of uh, Dental Practice Freedom Radio. Uh, today, what I'm going to talk about is, um, you know, one of the secret keys, I think, uh, when it comes to uh, really starting to uh, get more of your high-end services off the shelf and into the hands of your patients. And uh, next couple episodes, I, I want to really focus on some of the things that I have found to be vitally important in my practice uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm in a little bit of a transition phase right now just because uh, I've been in my practice less, but uh, it's still a completely fee-for-service practice right now, and uh, I intend to keep it that way for a long time, and uh, I do a lot, not a lot, probably one or two full mouth uh, rehabilitations a month in the TMJ space uh, using uh, minimally invasive techniques, and so... You know, that is my baby. That's what I, I love. And, and I, I get questions about that. And uh, one of the things I want to talk about right now is actually what I call emotional story selling. And uh, I, t- I kind of took both, uh, both of my mentors, Bob Proctor and also Russell Brunson. And Russell Brunson learned this from Michael Haig, who talked about how to create an effective story. I put everything together and I started to call it emotional story selling. And, um, I think that this is the number one skill that dentists need to develop in their practice in order for them to get on a path agreement with their patients. And uh, I'm going to talk a lot in the future episodes about how do you structure a new patient process uh, when you are delivering higher end services. Uh, there is, um, there's definitely an art and science to that. I see a lot of practices, they push patients way too fast through the process. And honestly, if I didn't know any better, um, when they present a case, that's twenty or thirty thousand dollars versus presenting a case that's two thousand dollars. It almost looks exactly the same. And uh, there's a book called Spin Selling, and I forgot who that was written by. Let me look. Let's see. Neil Rackham. Neil Rackham wrote Spin Selling, and um, the premise of the book is the higher the cost of the sale, the longer the process needs to be. And uh, I want you to think about that because I'm going to talk about it in a future podcast episode, but just think about that for five seconds. The higher the cost of the sale or the good that you're delivering, the longer the sales process needs to be. And so if you're doing the same thing for a crown as you are, if you're trying to do 12 veneers, you you're fundamentally are in an inside model. So, um, I'm going to talk more about that in future episodes. But today what I want to do is basically define what emotional story selling is and what I see all the time in dental offices and what I used to do and how to try to avoid some of that, okay? So emotional story selling is basically how we communicate on an emotional level with our patients using stories to drive home our point. Uh, Humans by nature are storytellers and some of us are better than others, but typically I want you to think about when you go to any type of learning environment and you take a week off of that learning environment, I want you to think about the things you remember and almost always they're related to a story. A story was able to tie in a block of information in a way that you could process and understand. And you need to be using stories all the time in your dental practice if you are to get patients to start thinking differently about what you do and why you do it. Um, Talking to them on you know on an informational level is not going to lead to any decision making capability whatsoever. Uh, I think a lot of dentists make the mistake because we're very analytical by nature. Most dentists are. Uh, I'm not as analytical as some that I've met, but I am analytical, and we think that our patients behave analytically and rationally, right? And we know that that's not the case. We don't behave analytically and as rationally as we think. We based everything on emotions. Now, what happens though is the dentist, because they've already went through an emotional epiphany, and I'll get a lot more into that 
in future podcast episodes, but because they've already had this epiphany, they're trying to convince somebody logically why they need the crown, why they need the bridge, why they need uh, an appliance at night, why they need a full-time appliance, why they need uh, veneers, why they need uh, implants, whatever the case may be, right? And so we actually talk to our patients on an, on an intellectual level and an analytical level about why they should buy it. But here's the problem. People don't buy analytically. They buy emotionally. So if you don't have a great story to be able to help them have their own epiphany on why they should be doing what you are recommending them do, you're going to be barking up the wrong tree for a long, 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 long time. And you're going to get frustrated because, you know, most dentists, what they end up doing is they start to learn more clinical information, clinical information, clinical information. And that just leads more to an analytical style approach when you're talking to your patients. And it, it actually furthers the gap. So I always say like the more, the more technical training you get, the more you have to tap into emotional story selling. Because if you don't, you'll be so frustrated. I think some of the most successful dentists are unconscious competence with this in the sense that they just, they talk through story. It's how they were raised. It's how they were trained. And they speak through stories or natural story uh, sellers, I call them, natural story sellers. And they're very good at this, but most dentists aren't great at this. So this is the number one skill, emotional story selling that you can develop to transform your practice. I have no doubt in my mind. So emotional, you have to start to talk to people on an emotional level. And I think of uh, Bob Proctor talks about the stick person. And so you might, you, you might not have any idea what that is. And, and you could look it up, Bob Proctor stick person. You could get a visual of what I'm talking about. But to make a long story short, you have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. And dentists almost always try to communicate with patients on a conscious to conscious mind level. People don't buy there. They buy on a subconscious level. So what you have to do is start to tap into how do I subconsciously communicate with this patient so they can have a subconscious epiphany, which will lead ultimately to them doing more of the treatment that I recommend. So you got to get into that emotional connection with your patients. And if you stay in the analytical realm, it's not going to work. So how do you do that? That's through story. And so um, I encourage every dentist that I work with or talk to, like, honestly, you have to simplify your message and you kind of have to cut through the, excuse my friends, BS when it, it's not really a French, is it? Like it kind of Frenched it down a little bit. So you got to cut through the BS and you got to get to why they truly, why they're truly in your practice in the first place what they truly want, and how can you connect with them emotionally to get that. When you figure those things out, what are they truly there for? Why are they in your practice and no one else's? What are they looking for, and how can I connect with them to show them that what I can do for them will get them what it is they want? That's the key. And so then you can almost, it's almost like bypassing straight into the subconscious level when you do that. Now you can get on the same wavelength as them. You can really understand where they're coming from. And now, you, now your task is to use stories to bridge the gap between what you know and what they know so they now can make a decision by having some baseline information through the use of a story. I know I packed a lot of information in this episode and, and um, I wanted to keep it semi-short. In the future, I'll probably elaborate a lot on this concept because if you don't understand that you have to connect with them emotionally, you have to understand what it is they truly want, and you have to be able to use stories to connect emotionally so that they can make the decision to buy whatever it is you're offering, then logically, on a conscious level, they can rationalize it. That's when they you know, will start to go, oh yeah, I could do this, and I could do this, and I could do this, and I'm going to tell my wife about this, or my husband about this, right? Here's the thing. When they get to that level, and they have to make a decision, and they haven't talked to a spouse yet, here's my word of advice. Have another appointment in the consult room or wherever you do your, your presentations and bring the spouse because here's the deal. I've had so many times where somebody says that, they go talk to their spouse, they try to communicate what they just learned emotionally with their spouse and guess what they try to do? They try to do the same thing you tried to do at the beginning, which is communicate with the spouse intellectually and the spouse is going to say, you're going to pay that for what? What are you doing? Why are you doing that? You don't need that. You have to now bring the spouse in. And guess what? You have to go through that whole sales process again. But now it's two on one because the patient is ready to buy. 
you're obviously ready to do whatever it is that you need to do for the patient. And now the spouse is, is got from two different angles coming at them on this emotional epiphany stage. So hopefully that helps. You know, I want you to really think about how do you connect emotionally with your patients and what kind of process do you have? I will tell you, if you speed this up or if it's chaotic and you can't get on a subconscious level with your patients, they'll say yes to certain things. I won't say that they never say yes. And they might say yes to big cases, but they won't do it consistently. And I'm of the firm belief that if you can't do high-end cases consistently, it will be very difficult for you to have a practice that's um, less independent or less dependent on insurance, um, able to differentiate itself in the marketplace, really craft and create your own blue ocean, which I talked about in an early podcast episode. Your ability to do high-end services is what differentiates you in your community how well you can do that. It gives you so much more freedom. You know, if I'm doing two high level cases, I call them high level cases. If I'm doing two of those a month, it almost, you know, for me, it, it can almost supplant what I would make from a production standpoint with every other case combined that month. So it gives me a tremendous amount of freedom. It's a one skill that I think is absolutely essential to develop. And it's the one skill that we as dentists neglect because of all of the negative connotations we have about sales, about how to present treatment to patients and, you know, I can't make them do it and you can't, but you got to give them at least a chance to say yes. And I think most dentists never give their patients a chance to say yes to what it is they're offering. So if you got any value of this, I would highly recommend you um, check out my webinar. I talk more about this and how to become an expert and how to really start to sell to patients emotionally. And uh, you can find that through dentalsalesecrets.com slash webinar registration. Um, it may change when you hear it, so apologize. I'll be talking about that webinar, though. I created a webinar specifically for this reason, um, to be able to help you go where you need to go. So hopefully you get some value out of this. Hopefully you have a great day, and I'll see you at the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode on Dental Practice Freedom Radio with Dr. Steve Schulitz. We'll see you on the next episode.